So what I want to talk to you today about is um, not so much uh, about our technology or, or about the, the Cloud Foundry Foundation, but it's actually about the problem space that we're, we're working to solve. Um, so Rich introduced me so I can skip the part that says that, hi, I'm a Apache member. Um, and uh, yeah, I do have a, a long history working in um, an interesting variety of spaces, right? So I started my career doing web development high up the stack, dealing as close to the users as possible. And then through the course of the career, I kind of dropped way down into infrastructure automation. Um, the Apache project that I'm involved with is Apache Cloud Stack. And so I've, I've seen a variety of um, uh, needs within the different layers of the stack. And what that's really kind of given me perspective on is the fact that we've moved into a um, world where um, it's very apparent that every company has to transition themselves into being some type of software company. You know, Mark Andreessen says software is eating the world. That's kind of an overused statement right now, but it is very, very important. And we, we titled the talk originally uh, The Making of a Modern Application Architecture, but, but as we explored the problem, we realized that you know, the right way to describe this is that what we're talking about is a cloud native application platform. We are at a dawn of a new era. We like to joke, uh, especially within the Cloud Foundry community, that this is day one of a you know, very long journey that we're going to go through. Um, software and technology is becoming increasingly important to everyone's lives. You know, the phones that we all carry, you know, these things have exponentially you know, more computing power, more connectivity than what entire corporations had available to them you know, just a few years ago. Um, and, and that's changing the way that people actually interact with each other, with, um, with their businesses, with their, with their customers, um, you know, with the companies that they do business with. And that is, is really, really something that's um, important to understand for how companies interact with you as individuals. So all this change in the way people interact leads us to what is uh, really a shift in what businesses need to do. They need to change to match this human behavior. They need to actually understand how to support the technology that's needed. <laughs> We're very connected, aren't we? <laughs> so for about 20 years, MIT Sloan School of Business Management has been saying that the way that businesses are successful is that they have to create a sustainable competitive advantage. Right? This has been the way that business, you know, MBAs have spoken about strategy. It's the way that boardrooms have thought about forming corporations, what the right product moves are. But you know what? MIT doesn't say that anymore. It's actually not possible to create sustainable competitive advantage in today's market. And so that puts you in a position where you actually need to approach things by thinking about continuous innovation. Because if you have an advantage, if you're you know, doing well in a particular market, it's very likely that market's going to shift around you. And that's because of the technology enablement that's happening across all the industries. So we've, we've seen a rise of you know, agile development. Now, this is, this is an open source conference. Most of us are involved in Apache. Um, but how many of you today, perhaps in your day jobs, work through some type of agile methodology? Can you raise your hand? All right, it's a good number, right? All right, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. All right, now, listen carefully. For all of you that have your hands up, you only get to keep them up if you're also doing continuous delivery. So everybody that doesn't do continuous delivery, drop your hands. Okay, that's the overwhelming majority. It's interesting, right? So what that's setting you up to do is basically water scrum fall, right? Is, it, is, that, you know, is that what actually delivers value to the business? You're doing a great job going from design to demo, and that business partner loves you, but you're not achieving the goals that you're trying to achieve. So how do we get out of this water scrum fall problem? Well, our perspective is that you need to be able to pair the notion of a cloud-native application architecture with this continuous delivery of business value. Right? These are two very discrete things, but they're very important. And you put these two together, and you get an environment that allows for continuous innovation. So we know open source matters here. Right? This is a splattering of logos, some Apache projects, some not, some single vendor open source, some foundation projects. Um, but what we've seen in the market is that today's markets are pressuring companies to collaborate with each other. Whether we're talking about the Apache way or whether we're talking about foundations that are uh, more industry consortiums, this need to collaborate to solve common problems is really critical. And then what, what we're using, you know, what the enterprises are doing is they're starting to put together stacks 
Stacks that are open from bottom to top, whether you're talking about down at the lowest level, things like the Open Compute Project, how is hardware being designed in a collaborative way, all the way up through the language frameworks that we write our applications in. The challenge for us as an industry is to figure out how we get cohesion up and down the stack so that we can actually solve the problem of continuous innovation. Now, if you want to do continuous innovation, today's evolutionary architecture, the latest evolution in architecture, is really microservices. It's not a revolution, but it's an evolution towards a design pattern that lets us be very flexible, that lets us um, innovate rapidly. Now, Martin Fowler has uh, done a lot of work thinking about continuous, uh, I'm sorry, con about microservices, and he's laid out really four kind of emergent requirements that have to exist in order to deliver uh, this type of architecture. We know that we need rapid provisioning of underlying capabilities. That's absolutely required. We have uh, an assumption of operability, right? So basic monitoring is listed there. That's the way Martin describes it. But I kind of broaden that a little bit. You have to assume that when you deploy something, it's going to be operable. All the day two operations are being handled for you. And there's, there's other requirements in there as well, including culture. Um, the, uh, actually, I'll flip back to that. So there's rapid application deployment. But the DevOps culture is, is the people. And people are really what make this work. And the DevOps movement is showing us that you need to be able to create cycle of innovation, cycle of uh, feedback loops, and that's how you iterate, that's how you continue to do that innovation. Now, when all this market pressure uh, creates the need to solve these problems, you end up with a lot of solutions being developed. Right? We have containers with you know, Docker or Rocket. Um, now, certainly, you know, the, these technologies are focused on how do you make um, the result of an application development process deployable. You know, what's the right artifact of the resulting uh, work? You have automation around you know, Puppet Shift, Ansible, Salt Stack. And then we have the problem of data center scale cluster management with Mesos, Kubernetes. Um, each of these projects are really good at what they do, and they solve a part of the bigger problem. Now, our perspective, again, is that what we need is a cloud-native application platform that kind of unifies all these concepts, takes advantage of the work going on at lower layers of the stack, and supports all the work that can occur at the upper layers, the language frameworks, the runtimes. We believe Cloud Foundry is a cloud-native application platform. It might not be the only one, but it's certainly one. So what is Cloud Foundry? At its heart, Cloud Foundry is a place of practice for continuous innovation. Now, you notice that I'm not talking about a software system here. What I'm actually talking about, if we break this down, is that we see Cloud Foundry as a noun, right? It's a proper noun. A foundry is a place where we produce goods, real goods, that are used for some purpose. And a Cloud Foundry is a place where those goods are actually the software artifacts that, that our companies need. And then a place of practice. The way that you go from being a bricklayer to a cathedral builder is that you practice, and that the community shares best practices for how they're delivering uh, their software, on how they're learning to iterate together. And so that place of practice is really key as well. And that gets you continuous innovation. So now I'll talk quickly about our project. Um, just in terms of the technology stack, let's look at the top. End users. End users have a lot of different devices. This is, they're the real reason why we do all the software that we do. Um, I've spoken at CloudStack conferences, and I've, I've reminded everyone there that the infrastructure is a service, right? Why are we doing what we're doing? We're doing it because of the end users and the value they get out of the software in the end. You can't lose sight of that. Down at the lower layer is where there's a, you know, a lot of different optionality around what infrastructure we're going to consume. And for Cloud Foundry, we need to be able to support all the various public cloud providers that are out there, private cloud software packages that are out there. Um, and then, really, the GUI middle is where we exist. So we have three components. The Elastic Runtime, this is where the applications live. They're, they're generally treated as ephemeral. Um, we have the services. These are the persistent state services that you need for your application. Applications generate data. Data has to go somewhere. Um, so this is where we have a lot of integration with Apache projects. So if you're running a Hadoop cluster, we see that as a service. If you're running a Cassandra cluster, we see that as a service. That's how we integrate with, um, with a lot of the big data suite here at Apache. And then we have this operations layer, because all of this is um, you know, fantastic for an application developer, but you need to be able to actually manage the environment, deploy it, log it, operate it. 
What we're working on right now uh, within the project, uh, two key things. Um, we're refactoring that elastic runtime. Um, that project is called Diego. Um, today, our elastic runtime focuses on build packs. Build packs are a Heroku uh, concept, but we've adopted it. But we're also implementing support for Docker and Rocket and potentially other, other frameworks. The other thing we've done is we've said, we don't have to be a data center scale solution. What we want to be is actually um, a, a solution that, of course, manages a data center scale, but we have now something called Lattice, which can run on a laptop or be deployed out on Amazon uh, via Terraform to quickly create elastic runtime clusters. So in closing, this is why I took this job, um, because we actually really do see a world uh, of computing that's ubiquitous, flexible, you know, it's portable, interoperable, and then vibrant and growing ecosystem. And to us, the ecosystem is really important. Apache is a key part of that ecosystem. Um, and with that, thank you very much. We appreciate being here and uh, your time.